All right, guys. So uh, as you know, I'm building this desk for my buddy Pryor Baird, and we're going to put in a drawer. And it's going to be really cool because it's going to have a scribed drawer front that follows the contour of the slab. But I didn't want to just breeze over this in the build video for this desk because I think this is a really important topic to cover, which is how to create a drawer box for what I think are the best drawer slides on the planet, which are the Bloom Tandem Blue Motion drawer slides. Uh, my buddy, my friend, uh, and partner, Sean Boyd, is gonna be doing a video on how to actually install the hardware. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to create the dimensions for the box and cut the dovetails by hand, essentially creating a drawer box by hand that is sized to some awesome drawer slides. And part of the reason these are so awesome, I'll put a little clip from their website here. The slides are hidden underneath the drawer and then it has this soft close feature. The dimensions of your drawer are really important to matching them to the, the casework that you've done. Uh, on this, luckily, we're, we're gonna have an easy time because we're just gonna have two sides that are gonna be there, but uh, we're gonna talk a lot about dimensioning and getting things right and how to read plans from the manufacturer. Uh, so let's come in here, let me show you what I'm gonna do and we'll talk about how this works. Okay, so let's talk about the size of our drawer box and what's great about these drawer slides that I love so much is they're hidden because they mount underneath your box and they're soft closed. So uh, I'll show you here at the end, they, they close really softly and that looks really cool and it gives it a really high end feel, but they are not that expensive. I think it was like 30 bucks per set. Um, make sure you buy them from Rockler. I'll link that down in the description. If you get them off Amazon, they don't come with all the hardware. Uh, they're cheaper on Amazon, but you also are losing some of the parts. So when making your drawer box, don't be intimidated by the diagrams. There are two dimensions that are always the same, and that is the length of your box is gonna be the, the part number. So we're using nine inch drawer slides. Our box is gonna be nine inches. And then the thickness of your sides are going to vary, but they make it really easy and tell you that the inside width of your drawer box is going to be the inside width of your opening minus 42 millimeters. So for us, we're doing 12 inches. So minus 42 millimeters, which here's a good thing to commit to memory is millimeters is 25.4 to inches. So you can just take your inches and multiply them times 25.4 or take your millimeters and divide them by 25.4. So if we divide 42 by 25.4 uh, with a 12 inch opening width, we get 10.35 inches. That's the inside width of our box. And then we just add the thickness of our material. So for us, we're gonna use half inch material. And so we're gonna add that to 10.35, which comes out to 11.35, because it's half an inch times two, one inch, 11.35 width. So again, the two dimensions that are always the same is the length of the drawer slides, and then the inside width of your box is the inside width of your opening minus 42 millimeters. And then for us, uh, our height is, the maximum height is whatever your opening size is minus 25, 30 seconds, which is almost, which is just over three quarters of an inch. So for us, our maximum height of our drawer box would be 1.72, but I'm just gonna make that easy and bring it down to 1.58 inch. So now we have the dimensions of our drawer box and we're gonna get to milling some materials. So nine inches by one and five eighths tall by 11.35 wide. And so we need to mill our material accordingly and we're gonna go with half inch material. Okay, so now it's time to cut our pieces to length. We've got them to thickness and height, and we need to cut them to length. And originally we had talked about 11.35 by one and five eighths inch for the back and front, and then nine by one and five eighths for the sides. Now the sides are tailboard, and if you're gonna cut regular dovetails, that would be what the dimensions you wanna do. But for me, I like to always cut a rabbit in my dovetails, which, you know, if you're new to dovetails, you don't need to do, but it helps hide some of your mistakes and it's great. In fact, I did a great video called A Comprehensive Guide to Cutting Dovetails. I'll link it right here in the corner. And uh, if you haven't watched that, you should. 
So we're gonna go ahead and cut this to length. We're gonna use the Cat's Moses stop block, which actually is gonna be out in a couple weeks. I'm super excited. We've been <laughs> kind of going back and forth with the manufacturer for a long time and we we're in development for a long time, but it's actually almost here, which is really, really exciting. In fact, if you've pre-ordered one, I will be sending out an update video uh, so you can see the samples of it. It is so cool, guys. So one of the, the cool features of it is when you wanna square off a board and also have a dimension, what you can do is it, it can be set either a quarter inch away from the fence or all the way up to about an inch and a half. And so what you can do is you set your length that you want it and set it away from the fence a little bit and you can just rotate it up, cut this corner square and then bring it back and rotate it down. It's super efficient and a lot faster than a flip stop. So uh, we're gonna set that up and cut these to length. Okay, so when you're cutting your rabbit, you need to remember that the, your marking gauge is gonna be different for the sides versus the back and front, i.e. the sides, your tailboard and the pin board. And so what you want to set your marking gauge to the width of your tails board and mark that out all the way around because you will have a half pin that you need to cut out on the tailboard. And again, we'll, we'll breeze through most of these dovetails. This is just kind of an important part when it comes to drawers. Uh, a rabbit is really useful because any blowout that you might get on your dovetails uh, won't show if you do this. And now, as I've said many, many times before, any good ruler or combo square is gonna have indentations where your lines are and so it makes it really really easy to set certain measurements so i'm just going to put my marking wheel there in the eighth and now once i've done that what i can do is mark the end grain of my board and then all the way down to my marking gauge line and this is going to be where you cut out for your rabbit and that just helps you align your saw Okay, so now that we've cut our rabbits, we're gonna go into cutting our dovetails. And I'm gonna breeze through that, because again, linked in the corner, comprehensive guide to cutting dovetails. But the one thing you do need to know is with your rabbit now, your pin board depth line is gonna be the thickness of what's left of your tail boards after the rabbit. And a super easy way to do this is put two rabbits, put your marking gauge in between them, and just drop it down just like that. And then sometimes I like to just give it just a little bit more and lock it in, and there we go. And so we're gonna mark out our tailboard, just like this, that we're only gonna do the faces, and we're gonna go ahead and go over to the bench and cut some dovetails. Okay, we've cut our tails, now we're gonna go ahead and cut our pins. I'm gonna use one of my dovetail alignment boards to line these up. Uh, I have dovetail alignment boards for sale in the Cat's Moses store, along with the dovetail jig you saw me using. So head on down, it's linked below in the description and pick something up if this is something you're interested in doing. Okay, we're going to go ahead and cut the groove for our drawer bottom. Now with these bloom hinges, you want it to be a, a the bottom of the bottom to be half an inch up from the drawer side. So I took a look at my dovetails and it looks like 
on the inside here that a half an inch is kind of going to be in a weird place. You sort of want to be in the middle of a pin or a tail and then you can adjust how you cut it accordingly. So I'm going to actually go nine sixteenths away from the bottom. And that's where I'm going to put the bottom of the closest part of my router bit to the fence. And I'm going to be using an eighth inch bit that I got from bitsbits.com. There'll be a 15% discount code down in the comments. If you want to use it, they're an awesome place to get router bits. So I'm going to go ahead and put this nine sixteenths away. That's going to be the bottom of my router bit. And then I'm going to put it a quarter inch up. And so for our height, we're going to go at exactly a quarter inch. Lock that in. Okay, and before I run this through my main pieces that I just worked so hard dovetailing, I'll do a test really quick. And so what you need to be concerned about here, obviously, is you want your all your faces up and your bottom against the fence. So this is why in the beginning I draw arrows. This really helps me with alignment. So we're going to go ahead and just check that. And so I can see that that is just going to be kind of right in the middle of that tail, which is good. So I'm going to, I've drawn two little red lines here on my fence and that signifies kind of the outsides of the router bit. So I'm going to come in here almost below my dovetail and drop it down. And then I'm going to go until I get just past the bit and lift it up. And then with the tails board, what's great is you can just do the same thing. Okay, so we have our drawer box done. I just kind of roughly put it together here. And we know our inside dimensions are 10.35 by eight, and that's taking away the half inch material. But then we added a quarter inch around each side because of the groove. So I'm gonna go 10, I could technically go up to 10.85 and 8.5, but I'm gonna do 10.75 and 8.25, and probably go a little heavy on the 8.25. That way it has a little bit of room to move around and expand and contract over time. When you build drawers, you don't glue the bottom in um, so that it can kind of expand because of the seasonal change in humidity. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to the right size and then go ahead and thin it out. I think, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to thin this down to an eighth of an inch. I should have thought about that before I started planning it because now it's probably a little thin to try and resaw, but who knows, maybe I'll get away with it. We'll see. So let's cut this down to size and get this drawer put together. Okay, so we have everything ready. I've got some glue, my mallet, some Q-tips for spreading in these small spaces, some sawdust for a little hidey hidey of the mistakey mistakey. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this thing together. So one thing to remember is that you do not put glue in your grooves. You want this to be free floating because it's gonna expand more this way than it will this way. So you want it to be able to kind of move around in there. Uh, so let's go ahead and get it put together. All right, so now that we have our drawer built and cleaned up, uh, I got to use my new number one hand plane that I got from Wood River that's so awesome. Oh, you guys made me have an impulse buy, but it, it was worth it, so. Um, all right, so now we need to drill the holes for this piece, which fits in the back. So essentially, the drawer slides go like this, and we need to drill this hole and notch out for the slide, so because these are hidden, they mount on the bottom like this. And so we need to make this notch, which is a minimum of 1 5 16 inch wide. And you just wanna cut it down to your drawer bottom. So in our case, it'll be about half an inch. We're gonna cut that by hand using the dovetail jig, uh, the cross cut 90 degree side of it. And then we're gonna go ahead and lay out for the hole. And there are dimensions for laying out the hole and you're gonna drill, it looks like a 10 millimeter hole, but make sure you verify that with your thing. So let's head over to the bench and cut this out.
guys. Well, it, it came out great. And I butchered that a little bit. I think I could have come up with a better way to remove the material for these notches, but it came out really good. One thing I didn't mention is that it's a six millimeter or roughly seven thirty second drill bit. And you drill that 10 millimeters deep for the holes that hold the back of the slides. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put this in. In fact, Sean is going to be doing a video. What's, what's your video going to be on, Sean? Yeah, I'm just doing a video where I'm really going in depth with the Bloom soft closed drawer slides, really talking about getting them nice and dialed in and all the different intricacies in doing these things. Yeah, and these really are the coolest hinges. It's what Sean uses in all of his projects and why he's here helping me now because uh, I really want an expert, AKA to pass off the work to somebody else. So go check out his video, it'll be linked down below. Uh, it's gonna be really good. Sean is an amazing furniture builder. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. Stay safe in the shop. And have a terrible day, Sean.